preacher's son And when his daddy would visit, he'd come along When they gather around and started talking That's when Billy would take me walking Out through the backyard, we go walking Then he'd look into my eyes Lord knows to my surprise The only one Boom, coming in hot, Chichi. How we doing, man? We're good, man. I'm coming. We're coming off a high with the big Lambuski in the house. Yeah, in literally in the house, literally in your house. And I watched it again. I showed it to my to Jess. She was hysterically laughing. You guys were so funny together. But my favorite part is like an hour later, after after Boo watched it back. He basically invited himself to your house every Wednesday for, for the rest of this, for the rest of your life. He's like, "Hey, I think this is what we got to do every Wednesday. I'll come over, Case." And you, yeah. And your response I'm is like, so like, "Hey, yeah, it was fun." <laughs> but you weren't like, "Yeah, okay." Um, You're like, "Yeah, yeah, that, like, yeah that every was a- Wednesday. That might be a lot." You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, but it's so good. He's the best, man. Is he not the best? He, dude, he's such a great guy. I'm yeah. telling you. And the, and the, and the Sunday. When he shows up Sunday mornings at my house, it's a, those are real stories. Every Sunday, so he come, I come home, his car's in the front, he's got the fire going out back, he's got his feet up on the on the yeah. lounge chair. Yeah, Ridiculous. so good. Hey, so we're getting into this phase where this show is getting easier every day because we have a lot of news every day. Yeah. Let's start. It's happening. Donnie Baseball going to be the bench coach for yeah. Toronto Blue Jays, coming yeah. off a sixty nine and ninety three season with the Marlins. He just made the move. What do you got? Yeah. I love it, man. It gives, you know, John, they brought back John Schneider, too, and Schneid had never really been, you know, a manager and d- did a great job, and I think, he, you know, he's definitely the guy for the job. But, you know, as players, we all know when you're in that dugout, when you watch the bench coach, they're, they're dude, they're making so many moves. I, I go back to Brad Mills with Terry Francona. They were freaking frack. Tito's running the game, but he's talking to Millsy the whole time, and Millsy's coming over to me going, Case, he come over me in the fifth. This is what a good bench coach does. A good bench coach is a couple innings ahead, right? Yeah. So Mills would be like, hey, Case, if this happens and they pull the starter in a sixth, they're going to bring in this guy, and they're going to bring in this lefty, and they're going to switch it up right here and bring in the righty. When the righty comes in, bam, you're, you're pinch hitting. I was like, that's incredible, man. This guy is so good, so knowledgeable. He's been around the game so long. He's seeing things before they happen. And I'm telling you, Chinch, 90% of the time, whatever Mills, Millsy would tell me, what happened. That's how I look at, at Mattingly going to, to uh, Toronto. This guy's managed the Dodgers. He's managed the, managed the Marlins. You know, Ross Atkins and Mark Shapiro, no idiots. You know, they, they know that John Schneider is a young manager. This is his first kind of, you know, oh, go. Uh, to have a guy like Mattingly that he could say, hey, what are you seeing here? What are you seeing in the uh, – what's the matchup you want from the bullpen in the seventh or eighth inning? Hey, who do you like pinch hitting here off the bench? You know, where's a, where's a, where's a switch we can make if we need to? Hey, what do you like with the lineup today, you know, with, with the analytics you have? And Mattingly is where he's lived for years, you know? Yep. So for, for Donnie to kind of take that, that, that bench coach role, that's awesome – for first off, for the Blue Jays, are you kidding me? That that brings Certainly. big time for John Schneider as a young manager. Boy, that, that that's oh, incredible. It. And for Donnie Baseball to have the humility, because he is one of the most humble guys out there, to say, "Hey, listen, this is a good fit for me. This is a good team has a chance to win a World Series really soon. They got a great front office in Mark Shapiro and Ross Atkins who run a good ship. And this is a this is going to be a good place for me to be. I want I want to win some ball games. I'm right. not in Florida anymore where they're not paying. In Toronto, they're going to go get guys. They're going to put the team together. I just love it, Chinch. Yeah. How I about this it. too? Add to, add this to the, the that was great explanation of it. I was going to ask you what a good bench coach does. You nailed it. So the second thing too is their top two uh, offensive prof- prospects, Elvis Martinez and Tucker Toman. They're 21 years old and 19 years old. And even if they're not getting to the big leagues this year, they'll be in spring training. And you're gonna, yeah. they're gonna go back down, getting ready for one more, maybe one more tough season in the minor leagues, or maybe coming up uh, at the end of the season, and they will have a whole spring training with Don Mattingly giving them tips on yeah. hitting. You know, like yeah. so now, Isn't that so now you, you, yeah. you're, you're already. I think, man, that that franchise has, has been very, very impressive the last few years. Like that that leadership team. Like I feel like everybody likes going there. People want to go play there. Um, Dude. It's a good Dude, franchise. Listen. Listen, a few years ago, bro, when they were winning, and Alex Anthopoulos is there, depleted the whole minor league system. You know, Mark Shapiro and Ross Atkins came in, and they, you know, they knew at the time we got to move Donaldson, we got to move Batista, we got to move, um, we got to move um, 
uh, uh, Strowman. Yes. Like, that's what I was thinking. Like, they, listen, we got to we gotta flip the whole thing. Let those guys move. Not sign them to big-time contracts. Obviously, it's not going to be a fan-friendly thing because those they love those players. But, dude, I was telling my son last night, Jake. Jake, Jake calls me. He's like, hey, this is a, Dad, it's the first time I ever watched Moneyball last night. I'm like, wow, that's the first time you watched Moneyball? And, I, and, I, and the thing that I hated about Moneyball was – They don't talk about you know, the pitchers. a side note. They don't talk about Zito, Mulder, and Hudson, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? That's, I know. You know, you don't win 20 games in a row if you have three of the best starters in a game. Right. But the, my point was, go back go back to Moneyball. I, dude, I came up in the Cleveland Indians system. Uh-huh. I came up. Mark Shapiro was our director of minor league relations. Go back to Moneyball and, and see how many times they mentioned Mark, Mark Shapiro. Mm-hmm. Who do you think Paul D. Podesto, the guy in Moneyball that went to the A's, learned it from? Who do you think started the analytics? Mark Shapiro, you know, he went to Princeton. This guy's, a, you know, a, a guru. His dad's been in the game, was one of the biggest labor negotiators. You know, that 94-95 strike, Ron Shapiro is the reason that thing was settled. Mark Shapiro is one of the smartest brains in the game. Mm-hmm. So when he went to Toronto and everyone's like, oh, they're blowing up the team. Oh, they, I was like, in five years from now or less, you're going to be one of the best organizations in sports mm. and you're gonna this guy because he has the money now he had never had the money in cleveland dude the dolans and, and the jacobs weren't going over a certain threshold now in toronto mark shapiro and ross atkins now have the resources now you can go get uh barrios now you can go get gosman now you can go get a uh, 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 springer you know all of a sudden it's like oh wow you're giving two of the smartest guys in baseball that no one knew about you know we, i knew about them because i because they're good friends of mine but i saw them i was a young player I, I came up with ross atkins as a player mark shapiro ran our minor league system i remember going down one time for the reds the triple a and i was thinking i get we get treated better in low a ball in cleveland than you do here in AAA because they knew how to develop players. They knew how to do those things. So I'm on a little bit of a rant just because I love Mark Shapiro and I love Ross Atkins and what they're doing. Bringing Don Mattingly over, dude, start paying attention to Toronto Blue Jays. This team is going to win a championship soon and they're going to do it for years to come, bro. They're years to come with those guys up there. Well done. You've said it all. Beautiful. Good job. Yeah. All yeah. right, so we got two other topics big time that we want to talk about. Do you want to do Judge first, or do you want to do a Abreu to the Astros first? Yeah, let's end on Judge, but let's do a Abreu really quick. Okay, let's I, do I think that. that's, you know, because, you know, listen, Abreu, that's a great sign, dude. This guy, you know, book it. This guy's going to hit 300. He's going to hit you 20 home runs. He's going to drive you in close to 100. That's what he does every year. I mean, you know, just book it. He's a professional player. He could DH a little bit if he has to. Still plays a pretty good first base. He's a guy that's going to post every day for you. He's Dusty Baker's kind of guy. You know, in, 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 you know, in the big leagues, we talk about guys that are like a Jose Abreu. And, and, and the, one of the biggest compliments you could say to another player from player to player or a manager to player, hey, this guy's a pro. And you're like, hey, aren't we all pros? We're big leaguers. No, this guy's a pro, man. A pro is a guy that shows up every day. A pro is a guy, maybe he's not as flashy as some of the other guys, but you know what you're getting every night. He's consistent. He's consistent as a leader. Um, you know, you don't have to, he's not a wild card. He's not going to come in hungover one day and say he can't play. He's not going to, you know, do this and that. He's, he's a pro. And when I look at Jose Abreu, I think the ultimate compliment you can say, when I look at him, I say, that guy's a pro. He's yeah. going to play you good defense. He's going to drive you in runs when he has to. He's going to get a guy over if he needs to. He's going to get a sack fly. He's going to do whatever it takes every night to, to win, and he's going to prepare himself the same way to be that player. Yeah, I'll give you two other things. One, people go, oh, he was, he's going to be 36 years old. Guess how 35 went. How about a 304 batting average with a 378 on base, 15 and 75? Like, And that's a down year. Guess how many games? 100 57 case there you, at 35 there, bro there 35. you go exactly yeah and exactly go ahead Where he's you? he's lean he's lost mm-hmm. weight over the last few years knowing that his body's getting older that he has to take care of it this guy i'm telling you man he's gonna play he's gonna age well he's gonna age well up to 40 i really yeah. believe that now the other thing that he brings and we've been told this by some people we're close with who who have ties to the white Sox, is like he's apparently one of the greatest unifiers of a locker room that there is because, you know, like, it's actually really is a thing. Sometimes, obviously, locker rooms get clicky, right? But a lot of times, sometimes, the worst thing that could happen is when the Latin guys and the American guys don't really get along or don't really interact. And apparently, he 
he, first of all, he, he's, yeah, he joins everybody together. And if you're on a team with him, it's 24 guys. Doesn't matter what you right. look like, what you sound like, what language you speak. And I mean, it's a no brainer. Anybody that was going to get him was going to be awesome for it. And the Astros now, bam, they're shoot. They do it, yeah. man. They do it right. Yeah. <laughs> now. Great, great, great point. Yeah. Great point. All right. Um, yes. I mean, that's not really all you need to say about him. He's freaking amazing. And that's a great signing. And by the way, I love if I'm a team. Get out there. Just get out and get your stuff done. Get your guys. Don't, get don't your sit guys. around and yeah. don't run, go to these winter meetings yeah. and have people lying to you left and right at freaking over a steak, <laughs> over surf and turf yeah. dinner. You just get lied to yeah. for like a week straight. <laughs> All right, now let's get to judge. This is a big fish, right? Uh, yeah. Reports yeah. everywhere. Like literally, basically what we know is the Yankees kind of gave that soft first offer, which you know is just whatever. We got to do it anyway. But it starts with a 300 mil at the, at the start of it. So he's starting yeah. before... Before he even walk, got off that plane, there was $300 million sitting there for him. So he's going to do just fine. Yeah. It's just a matter of how, how far it goes. How far it goes. Yeah. And who's yeah. paying well, for I it? Think, well, I think the big thing is they want I, I mean, I say, I guess if you're judge right now, you're saying, you know, I want the highest AAV in baseball. I want, I want to be the highest paid guy. And, and, and is, is the highest position player is that is it trout at 35 5 yes i believe who said this and so yeah go ahead yeah let me see yeah no go ahead go ahead Ginger. no what i was gonna say is whoever it was i remember asking how much do you pay judge this was like an insider guy like a, a Heyman or somebody like that or, or ken and i go what is he gonna get and he goes if i'm him i want any like one dollar more per year than mike trout that's what you get yeah uh, start with yeah. whatever Mike Trout is making. Well, well, well just... the, the rumor is eight years, three hundred million, and what it says right here is that 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 AAV would be thirty-seven point five for Judge, All right. which be that would be the highest in the sport right. for any position player. Trout is at thirty-five five. That yeah. makes sense to me. I'm looking at last year exactly. I mean, of course, those numbers shift right every year. They take two million, add two million, whatever. But his actual right. earnings last year were thirty-seven point one two million, apparently, from what I'm saying here. For, for Trout. So right, right. I, maybe he gets 40. Maybe he's up to 40, Judge, now. Maybe yeah, that's the new maybe. the new norm. <laughs> the new norm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is for for, for, for a, a superstar is $40 million. Can you imagine, dude? Is it, isn't, it, isn't it incredible? Like a few years ago, like we were both at the network for years, you know, mm-hmm. a few years ago. I remember like six years ago going, bro, it's going to be, there's going to be 500 million dollar contracts one day, 40 million a year. And we were all like, no way, no way. Yeah. Yeah, it's happening. I it's mean, it's happening. here. You know what I mean? It's here. It's happening. Hold on. I, mean, I got... I, I, no, go ahead. Keep what you're saying. No, no. Go, yeah, no. no, I'm just wondering who the first... Is is, is Otani the first $50, 50 million, million dollar man? Remember I when... I have to say, no doubt. Remember when Manningly got $5 million a year and everybody's like, man, Steinbrenner's <laughs> out of his mind. Ah, right? That was like 83 or 84. I'm going to do something fun here. Well, what was what was what was Bobby Bonilla's contract? Because when he left Pittsburgh, they're oh like, God. "Oh man, we can't afford that." He just got five years for thirty-five million. Let's find and, out. Uh, this is fun, you know. And then Bobby yeah. Bo's still getting paid now. We went yeah, joking on the Bobby Bonilla year. day. Do you know? Well, I think Cliff Floyd just stopped getting paid paid by the Mets. They did some Jeez. things. They did some things back in the day with the with yeah. their contracts. Well, the, Matt wasn't Matt off their financial advisor at the time. Yeah, and, yeah. But, not the best financial <laughs> advisor you can have. Yeah. Oh, did they not put the? Uh, I don't think they put the salaries on reference anymore. That's a shame. Really? Yeah, because what I want to do is I want to go to yours, and you can kind of put it in a tracker to see how much it would be worth now versus when yeah. you played. Oh, can you really? Yeah, they put inflation in there. It's really fun, but maybe they don't oh, do dude, it. Dude, I want to I see that. Although, if I were... Yeah, hold on. Let me try to find this real quick. Tell, tell a quick story. Tell a story about contract negotiations. I'm, I'm, tr- so I'm, doing, I'm trying to find... I'm trying to find... Um, I'm trying to find Bobby Bonilla's contract but it looks like yeah oh here we go hey, dude Sorry. he's gonna every july 1st through 2035 he gets 1.2 million dollars <laughs> can you imagine that bobby Bo, what it, a it, what a smart deal that was though. he retired forever ago i can't find this thing well, maybe i'm we'll trying to find what the contract was though the mets owed bonilla 5.9 million for 2000 and no longer wanted him so the club negotiated with gilbert and attached eight percent annual interest rate to the money i mean unbelievable it's going to add up to $29.8 million instead of the five point nine. Whoopsies. Can you imagine? What a deal. Like, what a yeah. deal. And when, you're at, when, when he was probably like 27 years old, he's like, screw that. I want the money now. And, and his agents were like, no, 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 no. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 you no. don't. No, you don't. <laughs> It'll be very high. That's like, you know, Allen Iverson, you know, had all those problems with, uh, 
with money early in his career and during his career. Yeah. He's, he, his agents and his family had him sign something where I think when he turned 50 or when he turned 55 or something, he gets a lump sum of money that's his that they just put in a lockbox so that he will, you know, if, if he ever makes his money back, even if he doesn't, by the time he's, you know, at retirement age, he's going to have like yeah. $30 million in a bank, even if he doesn't have any money right now. It's interesting how they, how these guys do these things. Wow. You can be yeah. very creative with negotiating a contract, can't you? Yeah, heck yeah. It's incredible. What, what was the easiest contract you ever signed? How's that? Easiest? Like oh, when I when I got I got a deal for the from the Reds. I think I was like five years, thirty three point wow. five. Did like, they come to you first? Yeah, they came to me. They came to me. Yeah, after the two thousand one off season. I, and I remember, bro, when you see those numbers, you know, you know, obviously, it's crazy, like I right? said, I grew up in a middle class house. My dad made thirty three grand a year. You see, uh, five years, thirty three point five million. You're like, ah! and I remember my, my agent saying. Hey, listen, you know, I think you can get a few million more. I was like, if you don't sign that right now, you're fired. Everyone's fired in my life. <laughs> if you don't sign that immediately, I'm so firing good. everyone that's associated with Oh, my life. God. Well, the worst, the stories that make me sick to my stomach are when a guy's like, when a guy doesn't take like a 17-5 oh. qualifying offer and then gets like $2 million yeah, or like Conforto. Conforto. Yes. Oh, yeah, real quick. Let's talk Conforto. Like, you, what, what happened to Conforto? Like, dude, he... Didn't it's a take very the $18 million thing, right? offer, then didn't get signed, didn't even play last year. Like, nope. what's going on? Yeah, yep. Yeah. And I mean, and he's a proven hitter. Uh, yeah. Look, I'm looking through all these notes on him. Higher barrel rate uh, than Anthony Rizzo. This is some stats. Makes hardcore contact more often than Cody Bellinger. Hits the ball in the air more than Andrew Benintendi. This is an MLB.com article. Uh, better expected stats, whatever that means, than Brandon Nimmo. So, I mean, that's one of those guys where it's like, why not give him a flyer, dude? He wind up, he might wind up being your three hitter and an all star this year, you know, yeah, no, and hit like no, exactly. 320. Yeah. Like, you, you, you loved him, right? As, totally as a hitter, agree. he's a good hitter. Yeah. I liked Conforto a lot. He could rakes, guy rakes. I like him a lot. He's got some pop. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I, I can't believe he's, he didn't yeah, play yeah, last I'm, year, I'm but, you. you know, I like to, like to see him get out there. Yeah. Guy, guy's still a good player. Exactly. And, and again, I keep going back. Him and Michael Brantley are, are sitting out there. Dude, you put, honestly, put two of them, put two of them in your, uh, in your, uh, uh, on your roster. Put them both on your roster, right? Michael Brantley and Michael Conforto. I bet your strikeout rates are going to go yeah. down and I bet you're going to have a pretty good offense this year. Yeah, you right. You have them right in right. sixth and seventh. Just put them there and see what happens. Yeah. Know, yeah, they make everybody thing. better, and they would both. They're both a cheaper version. You know, you get if you sign both of them, you get you know in your lineup. Now you got like you know one one monster. You might even be better than yeah. one monster having both those guys in your lineup. No, exactly. All right, uh, we're gonna get rolling. But hey, there's a couple interviews we have out there that, that we've done. If you haven't heard, you want to tell say say who? who no, yeah, 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 about. yeah. Well, we had Brian Kane last week. If you you know go see him, it was so good. And we had our buddy Brian Panuzzo on 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 Tuesday. So, you know, just go back and. Check it out, because that was a really, really good one, man. Panuzzo's yeah. just such a good dude. It was a great interview, Chinch, right? And, like, awesome. you know, a lot, lot of good tips for the mental game of life, which I like to yep. say, you know? Yep, I love it. Yeah. I love it. And yeah. he, he says something, like, basically, he actually did a really nice post after saying something like, you know, whether you want to make it big in the business world or in the sports world, the same 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 mechanics, right? And that's what you guys right. talked about. And if you haven't heard that, right. like, it, it's really great. Really great stuff. Exactly. All right, dude. Exactly. Man, okay, so this man. is going to be a fun week, dude. We're going to have cons- – dude, how are we going to do the show when you're at winter meetings? You got to do it from a We're beach just, or something. Yeah, well, I'll just, I'm just going to – I'm going to surf. I'm going to go out on my surfboard. <laughs> That's good. You have, like to do, you have to do every show every show in a wetsuit, <laughs> full-body wetsuit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's going to be All great, right. dude. I'm looking great. forward to getting to San Diego. It's going to be fun. That's going to be awesome. All right, we still got one. All right, brother. We got our old-school fun bag Friday day tomorrow, so That's we'll right, back. brother. I'll see, you to- I'll see you tomorrow. All right, sounds good. Love you. All right, Chichi, have a great day, brother. And have a great day out there to everybody. Let's go. Walking out through the backyard, we go walking. Then he look into my eyes. Lord knows to my surprise, the only one who could ever reach me was the son of a preacher man. The only boy who could ever teach me was the son of a preacher man. See what he was. Mm-hmm.